Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. And he went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. How many did he heal? All of them. It's actually spoken of in Acts 19, 12. These special miracles are extraordinary miracles in common everyday miracles. Now, in a Christian's life, there are common everyday miracles. There are extraordinary events taking place in our life. An extraordinary event manifesting divine intervention in a human's life, human affairs. So in everyday life, you and I walk with a miracle worker, and his name is what? Jesus. And we will have miracles taking place on a daily basis. But I would like to invite you to think back in your life of some of the miracles that you have experienced in your life and begin to share those with one another in conversation, listening to one another, asking questions. Tell me about some of the miracles in your life. I believe God wants to open our eyes to recognize that there are supernatural events taking place in our lives every day that have divine intervention and begin to say, thank you, Lord, that was a miracle. Let's say together, thank you, Lord, that was a miracle. A miracle is a tool that God uses to show people that He is God, that He loves you, He cares for you, and that He's merciful. Aren't you glad He's merciful? Know this, in trials, say together in trials, like the last 12 months, your faith is growing whether you know it or not. So in situations like this, your faith is growing. Jesus said to Peter and gave him a prophetic word one time that went like this, I am praying for you. Satan desires to sift you, word of knowledge thrash you, beat you up. But I have prayed, what he pray? Say it good and loud. That your faith would fail you not. And when you have come through, how many know that's some confidence in prayer. And when you've come through, do what? Go like this, help everybody else. Because what you've been through, you have been victorious in and you can turn around and impart victory to other people. Don't listen to someone's testimony like there's something you're not. Don't listen to my testimony like, well, I don't know if I believe that. Well, it's true. I don't, well, you know, he's just not normal. Neither are you. Go ahead and point to me and say, you're not normal. You're right. Neither are you. I'm pointing back at you because you're anointed because we live with the one who is supernatural and he lives inside of us. So I want you to say it together. I'm expecting miracles. And in the middle of all this mess, my faith is growing. Come on now. In the middle of all this, my faith is growing. God is real. God loves us. God wants to restore and heal us and God wants to bring you life. Right in the middle of challenges, right in the middle of adversity, right in the middle of when maybe things are the most difficult, more hard, uh, more difficult than you've ever had before. Where you've been is far greater than where you are right now, whatever you're facing. And you've learned as you've walked with the Lord, say it with me, God is faithful. God is faithful. John's prayer over them, 3 John verse two, beloved, my prayer for you is what? You'd be healthy, praise the Lord, and prosper, praise the Lord even as connected, related to your thinking and having the mind of Christ. Because he knows this, we're sick and poor, don't think right, nothing will get done. A whole lot of church is sick and poor because they're not thinking right. Their thinking doesn't line up to the Word of God, and they're overwhelmed because they can't do what they used to do because they're spoiled and whimpering and crying like a little baby. Quit thinking about what you can't do and feeling sorry for yourself and get out there and get somebody saved. Come on, come on. Listen to the Word of God. Stay connected to your pastors. Listen to what the pastors are leading, directing, and guiding us to do. Be a part of it while you go do your ministry. To be disconnected is disconnected. And by the way, to be disconnected is dangerous for you. Luke chapter 8, remember the woman with the issue of blood? She had a 12 years, spent everything she had trying to get well. If you have an issue of blood for 12 years, you can no longer be around your family or even your own children. Jesus stepped right into her life and intervened, not only healed her, but restored her back to society. God's in the restoration business. Say together, God is in the restoration business. He's a miracle worker. I want you to say it with me. I believe in miracles. It wasn't the work of getting here that healed you, he said to her. It wasn't the crawling to get here and the effort to get here and the work to get here. Or we'd all still be crawling for miles trying to get well. He said, it's by faith. You simply believed the word of God, and that God would be faithful to do what he said. By the grace of God, and the gift of faith came from God. He heals so you can have breakthrough in your situation. He heals so you can have breakthrough in the pain and the suffering. He heals so you won't be alone when you are alone with only him. He heals 
to bring abundant life to all those that are in need that come to him.